Now this is where skill-based matchmaking belongs. Well, at least strict skill-based matchmaking. Let me explain before everyone starts raging in the comments because a fan favorite mode just came back into Halo Infinite and that is ranked Tactical Slayer. Meaning you get to play SWAT while also getting destroyed. There's one. And there's two. That's a nice thing about Tactical Slayer. As a solo player, sometimes you can do just right. But in this video, I want to talk about skill-based matchmaking and the effect it has on the community and also just a general experience of gaming where it truly does belong within Halo. Because I do feel like there is a place for it. What are your thoughts on skill-based matchmaking when it comes to Halo? Leave it in the comments down below. If you guys like these discussion videos, make sure to tap like, help out the video and all that kind of stuff. If you're part of the 80 some odd percent people who are watching this channel who are not subscribed and want to keep up to date with everything going on with Halo, well, you know what to do then. So let's get right back into those details. Before we get into the topic of the video, I definitely want to touch on the changes that were made to Tactical Slayer right here, ranked Tactical Slayer, I should mention right here. For one, it's the Abandoned Evo right here. I think it's a fantastic weapon to be added into the sandbox of Halo Infinite. I was a little wary about it being added in, taking over the Battle Rifle, as I'm such a Battle Rifle fanboy. But with the Bandit Evo having a reduced range compared to the Battle Rifle, you'd be more precise with your shots as well. It's really led itself to being much more of a weapon that's based on skill and precision rather than the Battle Rifle, which can be a bit of a spray and pray sometimes. Times. Like strafing and juking shots is actually viable now within Halo Infinite, where before, not so much. But when it comes to skill-based matchmaking, ranked is where it really does belong. The topic about skill-based matching really did come back into Halo Infinite because it was refueled by the Halo 3 refueled playlist because I think everyone who was playing was like, wow, I really have to try really freaking hard just to be able to stay positive in some capacity or break even really in most matches. And in a social experience, it really shouldn't be that. Come on, I just spawned, man. In a social experience, it shouldn't be that strict. Now, I've definitely seen people say just completely remove it from the game. It shouldn't, skill-based matchmaking shouldn't even be involved with Halo or first-person shooters in general. And I would say no. But then there's also people that actually like it the way it is and think it helps the player base. And I would also say, well, no. There's definitely a middle ground we can capture. Oh my gosh, threading the needle with those shots. One thing is though, you gotta figure out like, okay, if we're gonna say change the skill-based matchmaking in some capacity, then how would you change it? It was like, oh, just make it less strict. Well, like, well, how actually is less strict, less strict? So for a game, I would like rank tactical slayer. Yeah, get strict, make it the most balanced match possible. Get down to the wire every single time. Cause that's where people go in to try hard to go in and really test their skills and improve at the game and stuff like that. Where in social, people are just kind of jumping in to blow stuff up, man. Let me blow some stuff up. That's all I want. Woo, nice little double. Now, skill-based matchmaking wrecking me right now because it says the estimated wait time is 3 minutes and 17 seconds. And I've definitely been waiting longer than that for the next match. So I wonder if my MMR rank is actually messing with who I can actually match because there's no way there's like that few people playing this mode right now. It just came out. People love rank SWAT. Guys, I literally waited like, at, like 5, maybe even 10 minutes for this match to happen next time around. Which SPMM has been known to do that is to mess with people's connection, you know, not let them be able to find matches, which I know one person in particular who is an extreme example of this, who really struggles with this issue is Mint Blitz. As someone who's in Australia, the lower population area for Halo, that he finds it really difficult to get into matches. And oftentimes he has to join American players to be able to just play games. And that's because the skill-based matchmaking goes like, no, you're too good at the game to be a match against what's in your area, which shouldn't be the case, man. Like there should be like a timing threshold or something like that, where you know, if you're waiting X amount of minutes to find a game, it just throws you in the one. It might not be the most balanced experience, but at least it's something. It seems like every day I see a tweet from Mintbliss talking about, oh my God, I have to carry this lobby. It's because the algorithm of skill-based matchmaking is going like, I don't know how to handle you right now, dude. You're too good for your area. And there is a hidden MMR rank when it comes to Halo, right? With their matchmaking system. And that matchmaking rank carries over to all the playlists within Halo. Max Hoberman, who designed the mechanics for Halo 3 and Halo 2's multiplayer, made each place have its own rank system to it so that you'd be properly matched against people who are at your skill level in some kind of way. Now you think, well, if you're a Onyx tier player, why shouldn't you just match against Onyx tier players at all times? Well, it's because you play different playlists differently, right? You don't play Team Slayer the same way you play ranked. You play ranked to try hard, get good at the game, and you know, improve. You play Team Slayer to just kind of run around and shoot stuff. Oh my God, can I thread the needle on this kid right here? Heek. Oh, uh, you just spawned right there too. Oh no! Now I don't know if that's something 343 can pull off with Halo Infinite. Maybe the systems that are in play right now are just too strict, too integral to the matchmaking experience that I'm just getting wrecked right now, guys. Holy crap. They're trying to switch up and go like per playlist matchmaking rank system would be a little too messy or something like that for their overall algorithms. 
I don't know, man. I'm not a coder. I just play the game and talk about it a lot. But I definitely feel like there's room for improvement here. Like, I'm going to try that hard in social modes. And like, I'm just going to go play ranked, you know? I'm not going to bother trying to play social because I play these modes differently. I don't play each playlist the exact same way. Though I totally understand where 343 is coming from, where they want to help protect like the casual players out there, the lesser skills, some people with disabilities and things like that. Because someone like me who's been playing Halo since combat of all back in 2001 shouldn't be matched against someone who just picked up the game like the other day or just downloaded halo for the first time it wouldn't be fair to them because i would demolish them it wouldn't be fun for them they'd quit and move on so there definitely is a place for skill-based matchmaking to exist it just kind of matters where and it's really difficult to find that sweet spot because you're trying to put a number behind people and m nuances of gameplay mechanics and you know we have total score and stuff like that within the game to try to line things up oh my god these guys are ridiculous check it out we got one of the Tenrite maps in here. This is a remake of a Halo 4 map. I believe it's Skyline, what the name of the map was called. So what kind of metric could you use to have a loser skill-based matchmaking system while also having it being fair to players? When I say no matter what, the most important thing is ping is king. If you can find balanced lobbies, but if it's a laggy experience, people are not going to enjoy that one bit. Got you, I got you, I got you. Yeah! Dude, this map looks so freaking cool. I think another metric you can utilize is definitely now that it's in the game, career rank. Now, I'm sure this is a stat that they were probably able to track before career rank came in, but career rank really showcases time spent within the game. And the more time you spend playing the game, generally you'll be improving in some capacity, some more than others, obviously. But I feel like that could be a fair metric to be able to utilize a more generalized skill-based matchmaking so then social experiences don't feel like I'm playing well, ranked Halo. Woohoo! That's a little one, two tap. Now, there could be some other metrics thrown in there, like general score per minute and stuff like that. It's just really difficult to tell what metrics 343 utilizes that defines what a good player is to them. As players have a general idea of what makes a good Halo player, but that can also be subjective. Look at this little campy boy in the back. Oh my goodness. Oh no, is there someone still back here? Oh, there's one guy over there. We run around this other side we should be able to catch him off guard there we go either way it feels like something needs to be changed just because like man like i said like the social experience doesn't feel exactly that social i feel like i'm playing with like tournament money on the line man i think the halo 3 refill play has really showcased that i would also say that generally when you come to like specific playlists oh my goodness i just spawned man i just feel like with the halo 3 playlist it really kind of brought out the bad side of skill based matchmaking holy crap because it was like a specific playlist you had to jump into now i would say most people who are excited about the halo 3 playlist are probably people who have been playing halo well since halo 3 and this guy's not gonna get me right there we go and so you have a smaller player pool and so then it just kind of gets in the way of the experience of playing the game because i think most people just kind of want to queue up for just team slayer like what's team slayer let me go play that people see halo 3 refuel and they go like oh that's probably like some weird different thing that i'm not really used to i want the same experience i've had in the longest time ever playing halo so maybe the casual players just weren't really into it dude this killmore guy is the only person getting kills on their team and he has it out for me i don't know there's just something up with the players man i don't know what i was like again we can't look at the metrics we all know the data we all know the measurements that 343 utilizes for skill-based matchmaking. We just know it's there. We can tell. This Killmore guy is an absolute cyber bully. Oh my gosh, finally, because somebody else, dude. Sorry, guys. It seems like these Killmore is the only person pushing on us, and I hate it. There he is again. Yes, and we get the kill on him for the win. I would say in closing that skill-based matchmaking deserves to be in the game in some capacity, just not so strict as it has been for the, us social players for the longest time. Strict skill-based matchmaking belongs in rank, generalized, looser skill-based matchmaking definitely needs to have its own separate algorithm, which 343 utilizes the same algorithm for both playlists, it seems like. So it can be really annoying. I don't play social playlists the same way I play rank. I might be a diamond tier player in rank, but I'm definitely much more of a platinum gold player when it comes to social because I'm just messing around having fun. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on skill based matchmaking. Check out this video if you guys have missed any content from me recently, but not uploading basically daily. So thank you all for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.